Hello, this is my presentation. Development and climate change in Egypt. That will be presented uh, on Tuesday, October 4th for the Egyptian expert talk function that is taking place in the IHUB building at Ain Shams University. Egypt is working on climate change at different levels in preparation for the COP27 to be held in Sharm el Sheikh in November. All state implemented projects such as smart cities, roads, renewable energy, treatment plants are national projects closely related to adaptation and dealing with climate change. What I'm going to show you now how the government and the country at large is involved uh, in climate change using some media clips. This is the prime minister declaring Egyptian strategy for climate change in the Nexus for Water Food Energy platform. He is a minister of environment in Stockholm talking about the outputs of the Glasgow COP27. This is the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development talking about the climate change challenges uh, using modern tools. Here is the Ministry of Electricity and Renewable Energy having discussion on green energy cooperation with Australia. Here is the Minister of International Cooperation, Dr. Raniel Mashat, talking with Mr. Tony Blair uh, about green projects. Here is even the Minister of Youth and Sports uh, having an initiative about youth and climate. Another initiative is planting 100 million trees on the road for uh, green transformation. This is a Supreme Committee led by the Prime Minister to prepare for the COP27. Here is the President himself talking in the Forum for International Cooperation and Development Finance. Uh, stating that we have a lot of potential to provide clean energy and we have to support African countries. Now I am going to move into a different subject talking about climate change mega projects in Egypt, starting with Egypt smart cities. Over the next few years, the Egyptian government plans to introduce 38 new smart cities. Uh, but uh, a couple of these cities are near completion. One of them is the new administrative capital. We are talking, we are going to talk about in detail, and the other is the new Alamein. This map shows only 20 of these smart cities where we give special attention to uh, uh, the new administration capital uh, in the desert here and the new Alamein of the Mediterranean Sea. This is how the new administrative capitals look like. It's a green city where uh, per, per capita area of green landscape is 15 square meters. It's a sustainable city in the sense that it uses sustainability in energy and recycling of waste. It's a walkable city where the city is connected with a pass for walk, walk, for walking and for biking. It's a connected city in the sense that we have different modes of transportation. We have a train, metro, tram, trolley, and bus and taxi. This uh, nice graph shows the modes of transportation on both sides of the Green River 
in the middle of the uh, new capital city where we people the mode of transportation is related to the intensity intensity of uh, inhabitants in different residential buildings and it's a very uh, good slide to transfer or as a transition from talking about smart cities to talking about transportation projects. Egypt uh, has a, a very uh, promising plan to improve transportation modes. And tra without transportation, there is no development. And this fact is as old as 320 years before Christ, where Rome's most enduring contribution to history is their roads, uh, which is a vast interconnected network spanning around uh, 322,000 kilometers. This is a map that shows you that transportation connects even very remote uh, locations in Egypt. Here is Marsha Matru, here is Port Said, here is the Red Sea, Aswan, and, uh, and other places. Uh, Egyptians usually use the metro and the microbus. But the microbus will disappear and it'll, and people will use, in addition to the metro, they'll use a monorail, a light train transit, LRT, a bus rapid transit, BRT, and high-speed trains. And this is uh, are the new modes of transportation. This is the monorail, this is the LRT, this is the BRT, and this is the high-speed train that will go uh, with a speed of about 250 kilometers per hour. Then we move to the largest agricultural uh, wastewater treatment plant called Bahr el Bakr treatment plant. And, and this treatment plant won three Guinness records certificates for being the largest capacity uh, water plant, the largest sludge treatment, and for the use of ozone uh, for disinfection. This is where the, the plant is located. It will be used to irrigate about 400,000 fedans in, in Sinai. This is the Bahr el Bakr drain, one of the longest and most polluted drains in Egypt, and here's how the plant looks like. Then we move to the largest solar energy plant that will be, that is taking place in Bin Ban near Aswan, and it will produce energy equivalent to 90% of the energy produced by the High Aswan Dam. This is the location of the uh, solar, largest solar plant, and this is how it looks like. Now we go to wind energy plants, and we will choose only one of them, which is Gabal Zit. Uh, Gabalizit will produce 580 megawatts uh, with a production rate of 2 megawatts per turbine. There are 300 turbines. And this is the location along the Gulf of Suez and on the Red Sea. And this is how the plant looks like. Now we move to canal lining, another ambitious project. Uh, to to line 20,000 kilometer of irrigation canals and save about 5 billion cubic meters annually. Egypt is characterized by very intricate irrigation and drainage networks, where this map shows you the limits of the directorates uh, for irrigation and drainage. And you notice here that the boundaries of these directorates do not coincide with the administrative boundaries inside the governorates. It's a bit a uh, complicated uh, water balance uh, problem that the ministry engineers are dealing with very efficiently. This is how uh, canals look like before and after canal lining. And before Egypt is different, Egyptians added uh, a recreation element to the canal lining project. Rainfall harvesting is another uh, important series of projects 
uh, by turning threats to opportunities to combat the adverse effects of flash floods by 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 constructing uh, obstruction dams for and and make use of the rainfall. Short protection is very important because Egypt has around 320 uh, 3200 kilometers of shores along the Mediterranean and the Red Sea. And this map shows you classification uh, of the most vulnerable areas as a result of sea level rise. It shows areas of high, medium and low risks. And this is a beautiful photograph in Alexandria showing how this uh, citadel in Alexandria is protected against sea level rise using strategic concrete structures. However, because Egypt cares about the environment, they introduced nature-based solutions, which is user-friendly and low-cost methods to combat sea level rise. And this method is extracted from local experience of residents in the area. And here is a video I want you to watch that shows you how this nature-based solutions is executed. One of the main breakthroughs over the past few years has been the realization that climate change, biodiversity loss, inequality, food insecurity were different dimensions of the same crisis. Here we are protecting the Nile uh, Delta against the existing uh, sea level rise. But with climate change, this phenomenon will continue. There are elements which are truly extraordinary in this project. The first thing is that we are speaking about ecosystem-based approaches. Rather than a concrete a dam, we have basically used the power of nature to protect populations and natural resources. So it's much more cost effective. But in addition, it's something that is living. An evolutive organic solution, which is built on the knowledge of a local population. How many engineers in the world have the modesty and the empathy to be able to start by asking the local population, how will you do it? I, I'm full of a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, visiting this site has filled me with a sense of wonder. There is nothing that's uh, replaced the opportunity to discuss with the ultimate uh, beneficiaries directly. So it's a wonderful uh, example in this project. We are leveraging the power of nature, the knowledge we have acquired in terms of ecosystem management to advert catastrophic climate change. My last slide is about green bonds. And green bonds uh, is very important because Egypt is the first country in the Middle East and North Africa to issue green sovereign bonds. This financing solution supports Egypt's Vision 2030 as it ensures access to clean drinking water and transportation through the use of monorail uh, in Cairo. And this map shows the locations of the different projects using the green sovereign bonds in the areas of desalination, clean transportation, water treatment plant, and sludge treatment facility. I like to mention that the first of the four international banks supporting these bonds are Deutsche Bank. My concluding remarks, Egypt is working on different initiatives to combat climate change adverse effects at all levels, including ministries, academia, NGOs, and the society at large. Egypt's new republic is embarking on several mega projects, as you have seen, including smart cities, transportation, treatment plants, renewable energy, canal lining, rainfall harvesting, and shore protection. And all these mega projects take climate change into consideration.